Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Don Koopman and Patrice DeHaan to talk about our time at a post-E3 event hosted by Nintendo to check out some of their upcoming games, including Pokemon Let's Go and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So let's get started. All right, guys, so we both got a ch uh, we all got a chance, I should say, to try out more of Nintendo's lineup for the Nintendo Switch for the rest of this year, uh, including some of their third-party stuff and, of course, uh, Smash Bros. and Pokemon. Uh, however, I think our events were a little bit different because you guys are based out of Europe, I'm based in the States, and I took a little trip up, trip up to New York. So tell me about your event first. Uh, Patrice, let's start with you. How was it? How was... What did you get to see and what did you get to do? Yeah, so it was basically a, sh a short morning a trip to... Uh trip to local Nintendo to see to see the E3 lineup from this year for 2018 and well first we got to do is a little short presentation when we first got to see you know the basics this let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee they showed us around basically what they shown at E3 but a little more explanation around it maybe some details that maybe people missed to interject with that they showed us more menus than I think during Treehouse or during the actual demo. Yeah, exactly. More more details. Because basically they went into the dem to the menus and I didn't expect it. I expected them to cut away immediately. Uh, but they showed us like the menu with the save option, with the bag, with the Pokemon option. And then I went into directly into the party and you could immediately see at the bottom see um, go to Pokemon box like we expected it to be in the bag. So, you can immediately go from your party to the Pokemon box, apparently. Yes, exactly. And they showed, they showed way more, I think, way more stats than people anticipated from, from what they shown at E3. I think that uh, what surprised me the most was people said, Oh, this is basically your starter's Pokemon. This is, this is your starter game for people who like Pokemon Go and want maybe push towards the next step but I thought it was actually more detailed than I was expecting and battle seemed way more detailed than people might ex might expect beforehand I saw way more use of stats way more use of stats when they defeated the Pokemon or when they catch the Pokemon what do you think Don I thought of what was way more detailed than I expected I mean I already gave kind of my thoughts during E3 um, I feel that once again the demo was longer than I anticipated. They kind of flew by for Freddy and Forest, actually way more than I was expecting. I was expecting the completely the demo to be in Freddy and Forest and yeah, and went look, this is what you yeah. can yeah can expect in the in the demo. But they actually went into like how the Pokemon interactions work. Like they rode on the Onyx for a little bit before going into Pewter City. Um, they showed us how if you go into a gym they make sure that you have the right type of Pokemon before you even can continue. Um, so they showed us a lot more in-depth stuff than I was more anticipating than anything else. You got, you guys got a lot more than I did. It was pretty much just uh, walk in there and like uh, when it came time for Pokemon Let's Go, let's load it up and hey, here you go. Have Try out the demo, try out the uh, Pokeball Plus and... That's about it. It was basically the same experience I had at E3, so it really wasn't that different. It just I had a lot more opportunity to hear the music, see the uh, game played on a nice big screen, uh, get a little bit more time with the Pokeball Plus, which was all good, but definitely yeah. did not get the presentation that you guys got. Yeah, uh, next to that they also gave us a presentation for Super Mario Party. Oh, okay, yeah, I definitely did not get that. Uh, Europe, they always do presentations. I think we've talked this in previous years' discussions, how they always start here in Europe with presentations. Um, but yet, after Pokemon immediately into went to Super Mario Party, uh, they showed us uh, more of the Star Wars-like mode in the game, where they um, you are split into teams of two and try to go on the board with normal or special dice, and that dice will allow you to take the routes you like and take the, your own route to the star. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was basically the same bum on map from E3, but they showed us more in depth the various elements and key opponents to it. Um, I was really impressed with how much strategy there was in this mode. Yeah, that was really great to see how, how that worked. It was already there with, with Star Rush, but what they build upon is um, how they change with the special dice. Because in Star Rush, it was the case that you purely had the special dice. Um, now it is like you can choose between a normal die and a special die. So one of your team members can go more old school and go from one to six. But another player can go um, 
a bit more risky and you basically share the amount of steps you take and you both go from your own spots so you both have the same amount of moves. Um, more so what was impressive is that um, the pure differences between all of the characters. Uh, one of the characters they showed was Bowser and Bowser's had two times minus two coins, zero, and then eight, nine, ten. Oh jeez. Yeah, his dice is way more risky. Basically, the characters are divided by the risk you're willing to take to either to ha gain a head for your team. And, you know, the, more, the, 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 the low risk characters like Peach and Mario had more normal dice. And once you get the, the more risky characters like Bowser, you know, you can take the risk by rolling them and having a low percentage chance of better rolls. But, you know, also a percentage of, well, having to down your team, basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was really interesting to see, and especially the the fact that once you combine your your both your dice rolls for your team, and I thought this detail was something that in previous Mario parties maybe you need to use. Like, oh, no, I want to get to that spot because you want know, to get some coins or get a bonus game that I really need or get the star. And it's like, oh man, that's six spaces away. Oh, it just rolled an eight. Now I passed it. And now what you can do is. If your paces are, let's say you need a 10, but together the two, two dice rolls, you have, oh man, I threw a 13. Now you can just say, okay, I want to go to the spot for 10, and then he calculates a route where you take three extra steps and then still get to the spot. Oh. So that was really fun. Basically the system of Star Rush. Yeah. But the major difference from Star Rush is, in Star Rush, um, how you activate minigames there was with balloons. So you had to run into a balloon and that's how you activated the minigame. Um, here they're still doing it the traditional Mario Party way where it's at the end of every turn. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> uh, and it, um, it kind of decides um, like the, the coin that you get. You have to pay 10 coins for a star. Um, wh one thing they brought back from Star Wars though is that you, the characters that you don't choose um, appear as special... Uh, places on the board. So one of the examples was Rosalina. So you basically get the Rosalina dice on top of your two normal dice rolls within a team. Okay. So you said they only showed off this map and you said it was a little bit closer to Star Rush. Were they able to confirm to you at all that they'd have more traditional um, I mean, boards? They, 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 they did confirm it afterwards. I did ask them, but they weren't showcasing it for during E3 and during the presentation. As long as they're there. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I like the Star Wars setup a lot. I think it's much better than what they did with the car, for example. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, because because it's much more strategic in many, many ways. So having both there is even better. Mm -hmm. um, and then they showed a few more mini games. One of the mini games was uh, basically you were shaving ice and making a tower out of that, which was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it looked really, really fun. <laughs> it was super funny. Um, and then afterwards they showed us the two Rec Room games, Toad's Rec Room that uses multiple switches that they also showed during uh, the triage sections. Mm -hmm. Now, did, you, did either of you two get to play the game personally, or is it just it during this presentation? Playable. No, wow. It wasn't they, playable, no. They, they weren't allow allowing us. They were no. strictly having uh, two additional people, yeah. and including one of the PR people to play the game. Including so, including the guy of Nintendo of Europe. Yeah. So we we could only like really absorb very close, and we can get as close as we wanted. We were just not allowed to touch the controllers or do anything else. Okay. Yeah, and they did confirm that the board portion of the Mario Party isn't playable online; just the mini games. They reconfirmed that to us. Yeah. Specifically. Which is a bit of a shame, but hey, baby steps, I guess. At least we can play something yeah. online. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, so what they show? What they show? Show next, Petri. Um, well, that was basically the, it for the presentation part, mm -hmm. and then we just got to a room where a whole bunch of demo stations, and then you had, you know, a few hours to basically pay, play whatever you want. What was there? So, from of course, let's go Eevee, let's go Pikachu, uh, Smash Ultimate. There was Dragon Ball Z Fighters. There was Monster Hunter. There. Starlink. Uh, Starling, yeah. Um, Overcooked 2. Over, yes, Overcooked 2. And, Killer Cream um, Black. Killer Cream, yes, that's the last Ooh, one I nice. played. Yeah, Killer Cream, yeah, that was also and, uh, and, Fi and FIFA. Oh yeah, and FIFA weren't allowed to film that film, in, yeah. in, in any way. 
Yeah, the, the, the unfortunately, all of the for my event as well, they were very restrictive. Like I couldn't get any more footage of Smash Brothers. I couldn't get anything else of much of anything really. It was just it was a shame. And it's it's really funny how you guys talk about how they had all these stations set up. It almost sounded like a mini E three, just like centralized for you guys. For me, yeah, it was exactly. yeah. Literally, I'm in an uh, I'm in an office, and they bring in developers from Capcom, um, Team Seventeen. Uh, EA for FIFA, and they'd talk a little bit about the game, and then show off show off a little bit. And either I would get the play, or they'd show it themselves. So um, one of the first things they showed off to me was Starlink. Now, did you did either of you get to play that as well? I had a full uh, hour presentation during E3 at Ubisoft mm -hmm. on the third day, and so I understood the game a whole lot better after that. And then I got to play the same demo now during this session but without any people actually knowing what they are doing so they were watching me actually <laughs> play the game Great. which was which was which was funnier um but they did have for example the star fox model there which wasn't there for the majority of e3 hmm. um they only solely had it at the ubisoft presentation they didn't have it at nintendo or in, in the public or private area yeah I uh, I actually got to play with the Star Fox ship as well. The uh, it was uh, the R wing, and I, I gotta say it was, it's funny because you can put any character into the R wing. It doesn't have to be Fox or anything like that. Sure, yeah. And I, I guess it's the first time I've really looked at Starlink, and I found it was really clever how you plug in the pilot, and then the uh, vehicle that you choose, the starship that you choose, actually goes over the pirates. The pilots, so they're actually in the pilot seat, which I did not expect. I thought it was just like, yeah, let's scan in the pilot, take it out, and then put in the uh, ship. No, no, no. It's it's basically, yeah, it's basically those parts, the ship itself, and then the weapons. Mm -hmm. That's basically how um, each of these setups work. Um, so you had the pilot, you slot it in from underneath. Then you immediately have the ship, and then you can put the two weapons on the side of there. Right. Yeah, I really, really like it, especially once somebody explained to me what that game actually is, because my first impression was during E3, during our Nintendo meeting, mm -hmm. and I didn't get it. Like, I understand what they were doing from a gameplay perspective, but I didn't know why they were doing it. Um, when I played during E3, during the actual presentation, I was like, okay, now I get it. So you have these dual weapon systems, you basically have a free range mode, you have more of a flying into space mode, you have all the different sets and elements to it. Okay, this could be really cool. I got the sense as well, like it wasn't, it didn't click for me right away, but by the end of the demo I was kind of getting it, how you could plug in different weapons for different situations. And they gave me this one, um, uh, this this one uh, missile base with thing that uh, immediately did, uh, sent enemies up in the air. They were kind of left floating there. And if you hit them again, you would get some a special explosion. Or if you hit them with a different weapon, which I had a fire weapon equipped at the time, it would mm. cause a fire blast that would damage other enemies. And it was really cool right. to see how the weapons could interact with each other in that way, and how each mm -hmm. pilot has their own special stats. And you can definitely see where they're going with with the whole toys to life aspect of it. But on its own, it's it's quite fun. It was, you know, yeah. I wouldn't call it anything spectacular, at least from just that little bit. But there's there's definitely fun to be had here. And at least there's some depth to it that I appreciate, um, especially with the weaponry. Um, like because I had one of the developers actually sit next to me. Mm -hmm. It's basically. I knew what the best weapon combination is going the second time in. So on the left weapon, I had a black hole weapon, uh, which if you hold it and then shoot it off, um, it absorbs enemy like energy from the enemy. Oh wow! Especially if if it's at a weak spot. Um, and then at the other one, if it becomes weak because of that black hole, you need more an offensive weapon. So at the other hand, I had like a more ice blast. Mm -hmm. um, so it get um, some effective damage in. So that second time around, I was just flying through that demo, man. <laughs> nice, great. Did you get to play it at all, Petri? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I focused more more on Smash at the time. But uh, <laughs> what it's, a it's, shame! It's to, yeah, no, it's fine. But I, I'm really interested in it. I think it's. I think you truly do see from the videos, at least they're online, a fairly big difference in at least graphical quality between the Switch and the in the other versions. But if the gameplay is still the same and and enhanced for for Nintendo fans with the uh, Star Fox elements that still remains a fantastic game then we'll see how it 
turns out of course at the end but it looks looks to be really fun i do think they need to show off more in general to mm -hmm. make people understand if even don says like wait what is it i need to see more i need to play more i need more time with it to understand it let let alone someone else who doesn't have many chances beforehand to get their game hands on the game so yeah maybe explain it a little bit more would be good move before uh, before it's released yeah absolutely right yeah i I've, I've honestly that's i think the biggest challenge currently with starlink um because I had so much time to learn it, because so much time to somebody to walk me through it, I feel that I feel I have like a way better understanding and actually a liking to that game. Um, from a from a pure tutorial tutorial perspective, that becomes a lot more harder because basically you don't have somebody next to you explaining things about the game. You basically have to figure that stuff all out on your own, and that's where I think Ubisoft might run into trouble with Starlink. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But, uh, well, uh, what's the next game you guys got to play, or another game you got to play? I would say my next game that I went for it was Killer Queen Black. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I only got fun. to play it. I only got to play it once during E3, so I was like, I need to play this again. I need to play, have more time with it. Um, and, yeah, that game is so much fun. Uh, Andre was um, completely talking this game up, and uh, yeah, he's totally he's totally right in that. It's a it's a really good multiplayer game. Um, so where it comes down to is that you have uh, one killer crane who roams around the screen and destroys try to destroy all the workers in the opposite crane from the other team. Uh, the crane has a four four lives, and once all of those lives deplete, you get a very dominant victory. And the way you can get a victory is by throwing berries into various holes on your side of the field. And by filling all of the holes, you get an economic victory. Um, how do you approach winning? Well, um, the workers can be changed into attackers that can attack the, the killer queen and all of the other workers. You can also make the workers just speedier so they can quickly move more berries around. On the queen side of things, um, she is a very dominant attacker, but um, if she attacks from the back, she's very vulnerable. She'll be, so we can shut down like in a few tries or so. So you constantly have to move around, uh, know how to operate the four characters very, very consistently and very good in a sense. Um, but um, everything about the game feels feels very well thought through, like the powers that all of the various minions has, you have the option of a laser, more of a sword weapon, um, and then on the queen side you have the more speedier attacks that can quickly let you dominate the field. Um, I, from a multiplayer perspective, I love this game. I cannot <laughs> wait for it. I think that... Um, Especially online, this can be one of the most fun things I will play in the next year, <laughs> multiplayer-wise. Um, but, um, yeah, I just had a good time. We just s spread across two Switches, each with four players. Um, I basically basically got to play against the entire PR staff of my Nintendo office, which is the most fun thing in the universe, and we defeated them. <laughs> Hooray. Great. Yeah, it was a really fun time. I, I also played uh, w with other people at the event, other press people, and against or with some PR people, which changed it up. And it was a really fun time. I didn't expect it to be so much fun. Especially, it, it really harps back to the original Mario Brothers, where you have a 2D plane and you move around. You also move, if you move to the side, you come back on the other side of the screen again. And yeah, it, it's really quick games. Once you know what you're doing with the Queen, you can basically tear through the other enemies. If they don't get the game yet or are fairly new towards it, then you just tear through the game. New round starts up. It's all very quick. It's easy to pick up but also quick games and I really like the, the pixel aesthetic it's not too hard to understand what is what inside the game and I also like the third winning option which is basically having a snail on the bottom of the screen and <laughs> you sit on it and you move the snail towards your side of the screen and once the snail is at the end at the finish line which basically also is represented by a finish line with a line towards like a runners have <laughs> and yeah it's like traditional runners would have so and then you sit on it and it moves of course like a snail very slowly so you have a lot of uh, there are a lot of chances 
chances to be hit and knocked well, off. Well, to be fair, it off. if you if you put a speedy worker on the snail, it goes a little quicker. Actually, yeah, it goes a little quicker. Yeah, we never got, went for that victory because it's very complicated, and especially you leave yourself open for a lot yeah. of attacks. Um, we usually went for the queen or the economic victory. Yeah, it's it's a lot it's a lot quicker and a lot more uh, reassuring to be able to win. But if you can get that victory, it's a true it's like dab towards the other folks. Like yeah, we did it with the snail. So if you can get a team together who focuses on that, it, it's a it's really cool option. <laughs> I've still not played the game yet, but it, every time I hear everybody talk about it, they always had such a great time. And right. I, I hope this gets more attention because everybody loves it. It just needs to get it in people's hands and show it off and see just how good it is. But I'm, I'm excited to eventually try it myself. Yeah, lots of other indie games, of course, are on other platforms so people can at least see videos of it and stuff like that. And the fact that this is just in some arcade games in the US now makes it a lot harder for people to see videos. But now that there are more previews and more preview videos coming out, I think people should really look it up and really look forward towards it mm -hmm. absolutely uh, i will say a nice arcadey game that i got to play at my event was overcooked 2 and i played the original it was a lot of fun but it, it's it's good to just have more overcooked and i liked I like that they added a new move, uh, the fact that you can actually throw food now uh, in order to get oh, it to yeah. everything. It's amazing how much being able to throw food right. changes things up. I know, right? Um, in our demo, we had a stage where the stairs would remove like mm -hmm. every 20 seconds and go to the other side. So basically, you were kind of forced to throw your food a lot. Yeah, you had to. So so one person at the left side would uh, basically chop a lot and then throw it your way, or throw the buns for the burgers. Uh, and uh, you had to throw to their side, you had to throw the the, the meat or the salad. Um, and then uh, to the right side, you had somebody there who was serving the orders and bringing the plates back. And it was very frantic action back and forth. Um, it was well paced uh, more paced well better paced than the original i felt that the original was fairly good paced it had a difficulty spike so it mm -hmm. started okay and then it had a very hard difficulty spike at least i felt that way oh yeah especially when you had more players on then it, it spiked way too much especially if you have some casual players with you it's like it's like oh it's all fair and good and so suddenly they hit a brick wall it's like i right. can't do this anymore and while i still had like people in my team who were struggling we still managed to get like two stars out of it which is you know that's fair enough oh yeah especially for somebody who who has never played it before <laughs> it's totally fair mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah th we basically got a lot of orders in we missed like an order or two and it, it felt really good um especially the variation of what they're doing with the stages like the flying stage for example where um it could crash at any moment and then you have to adapt to all different areas so yeah. very interesting yeah um and then with the once again with that castle area where the the stairs drop at any moment you have to be so spear focused and constantly need to give each other tasks while the game is evolving and I think that's what I really like about Overcook too. Yeah, one of the uh, two developers of the game of the original game was there at my event, and he helped explain it about it. He and he mentioned about that uh, difficulty spike that you mentioned, P Patriot, uh, yeah. and just how it did get a lot harder. And now they're saying that they, they one of the big fo things they're focusing on is a much more gradual increase in difficulty like it's still going to be tricky but they're going to like have a better build up to that trickiness in order to keep people going and it feels like they kind of accomplished that plus it was kind of cool that the one there was a new food option in the form of sushi that was that was kind of cool to have something new to cook the person who did play overcook before was still kind of confused by what he had to do mm -hmm. so because I played also a little bit before, I was like, so you need to put that down on the plates, you have to chop this and cook this, and, and then after a minute or two, we, we fully got it. But it's, um, yeah, everything about it is really good. I love that it's now playable with other people online. Yes. That is fantastic, because I don't always have people around me, but I would love to be like in a Skype or Discord call, 
<laughs> with everybody and try to play Overcooked for an hour or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that will become a screaming match. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Get this, I need this, grab this, all around. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you fool. <laughs> no, I, I think the online is going to be a, a real big help for that game. And uh, Yeah, espe especially if they do harder stages at the end and you have casual people around you living. It's like, uh, that's too hard for me. Then you can just look up someone. It's like, okay, I want someone who knows this level by on top of their head. They know this by hand. It's okay, let's really finish this level. That's, on that's three another good point. That's another good point because they're also adding local wireless. So basically, you, you're sharing progression together. Yep, that's really, that's really good. good. So yeah, I, yeah. I think this is going to be a good sequel. It really feels like it. Yeah, I feel that they made more options and more important steps to making it fully switch enabled like it was pretty good for multiplayer on switch but other than that it was basically the same game mm -hmm. now they're just embracing everything that the switch hatch has which is really good mm -hmm. absolutely now did you guys get to play any other uh, third party games besides ones we've already talked about dragon ball that was not at my event but i i did play a little bit of it at e3 and it seems like a good port i was really impressed by how little change there was between the ps4 version it's like I was expecting a way more heavier downgrade on the graphics, but it's it's also, of course, because of the art style. The art style they chose, they can downgrade the, the backgrounds a little bit, a little bit lower resolution, and then you notice it's far less than if it's a right. realistic art style, where if you, if you downgrade the graphics from that, then you immediately see it. And now just because of the graphical art style, you see it way less, but it runs very good and isn't even done yet. So I was really impressed by how fluid it was and how much the same it was. Honestly, how I was looking at the menu is like they had all most of the characters in there, except for the ones that were enabled through updates. So basically, that the base game already there for the most part yeah. as it comes to versus mode. Mm -hmm. um, but but where it comes down to is that Arc System Works is a really solid engine, an engine that basically runs on everything. Um, and they always said this: like we can port a game, we just don't know if there is a demand for it. Right. Um, right. And they kind of waited on how Xenoblade, well, Xenoverse Two did. Um, before pulling the trigger on bringing it to Switch. And um, I think they're doing it right now with still releasing it in a decent time frame at a time where... People are still playing it on the console, yeah. No, where F Fighters, no, Fighters D is still getting updates. Right, mm -hmm. right. And with most of the, the updates then being there once the game releases on Switch, that's I think that's really good. And I said that they are still releasing updates until the end of this year. So then it will be kind of on par with the other version still. Um, and then the most important part is that obviously you can play it on the go now, which I think is the biggest takeaway. Yeah. Yeah, and especially the the, the, the guy who was demoing it for me said like, well, there is also an option to play uh, with one Joy-Con. So you, oh, wow. if you have your Switch on the go and you only have the two Joy-Cons get to come, of course, with your Switch, then you can always play a game with someone else even if you don't have a real second controller. So that's really good. I wouldn't wasn't able to see the options, how that exactly works and which buttons is what and if everything, if something maybe is motion-based or something like that. They, he couldn't tell me, but he said like, well, there is an option to play the game with one mo one Joy-Con, so that's really good. That's awesome. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I want to play that game with one Joy-Con. <laughs> True. Though. Yeah. Well, I, not, not because of playability, because I have played games with one, one, a single Joy-Con before, but especially because some of the special techs require a certain button combination, I don't think that would work well with a singular Joy-Con. Yeah, we'll see how the how the options are for uh, for controls. But to me, if you're playing it like that, you're probably just going to do casual matches anyway. Nobody's going to do hard, hardcore series. No. It's just, <laughs> hey, check out this game with me and pass a controller. Like, this is all I have exactly, available. Yeah. The fact that thing. that's an option on the go is really good. Then after that, I went a bit into FIFA. Mm -hmm. I, I, I uh, doing EA Play at E3, for which I went entire way to Hollywood. Thanks, EA. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I uh, played a little bit in handheld mode. I didn't have the TV version there, but this one was solely the TV version. So hey, that worked out. I kind of played both now. Both, yeah. Um, um, the TV version seems to run slightly better than FIFA 18, and that's not saying much because the custom engine they built for the Switch version was already really solid. Mm -hmm. But um, the big difference now is that they are adding more graphical density to the stadiums and to how the game looks out soon 
zoned out when you're actually playing the game and passing the ball back and forth. Uh, so the overall action feels a lot smoother. Um, one of the things that they're adding is more of the um, the engine, more, en more elements, more physical elements from the Frostbite engine without implementing Frostbite. Mm -hmm. So their normal sports engine is more, um, it has more, some of the DNA from the Frostbite engine is now in the custom engine for Switch. Uh, which means that um, the overall action is very similarly paced to how it will be in the proper FIFA 19 and Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. um, so they're doing a lot of good stuff with that. Overall, it just it just feels nice to play. Um, I have no problems playing it with like a Joy-Con grip, unlike other games, um, because basically you use the D-pad for specific tactics, so you don't really use it for the proper gameplay. Um, so overall, though, I played a little bit for a match or two and was like, yeah, I'm good. That was good. <laughs> I mean, they had it in mind. I played a little bit, bit of it, and it seemed like it seemed like soccer. It seemed like it handled it well. Nothing seemed to be outright bad or anything like that. They talked about some new mode to it, but I don't follow realistic sports games at all, so it's hard for me to like really like keep it in my head about oh, that's what this is. They were likely talking about how they have now the licenses for for the big championships in Europe. Yes, yes, that's it. Uh, because. Um, uh, Pro Evolution Soccer from Konami actually dropped them at the beginning of this year. Oh, okay. So, so EA Play, during their presentation, they talked for 20 minutes about how they got the licenses. <laughs> Basically, you got them because Konami didn't want them anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well done, EA. Yeah. Yay. Great job. It, it is really surreal, though, but when, when I was playing to see advertisements for the PlayStation 4 Pro in the background and Pepsi yeah, Max. Yeah. And it's like, okay. We, you weren't allowed to record it during our event. I was allowed to record it at EA Play, so I basically took a screenshot of that and half post on my Twitter. It's like, <laughs> you, you can't stop from crossing fate. Nope. And there, there's yeah. the crossplay that you're allowed. <laughs> but it's very realistic because during those championship matches, those kinds of ads are the ones who hold the show at the, True. on the yeah. sideline of the game. So, yeah. 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 I, I mean, like, the UEFA Champions League is sponsored by PlayStation. So, it does make sense that they're there. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if they will be there for the final version of the <laughs> game. Probably if they're already in this version, but we'll, we'll see. Did you get to play it at all, Patrick? No, I just watched the match or two. Okay. Well, the only other third party release I can think of was Monster Hunter for the Switch. I forget the exact one. Generations Ultimate, I think it is. Generations Ultimate. Yes. yes. And I didn't get to play it myself. They just did demoed it for me. And yeah, it looks like uh, very much like the, the 3DS version of uh, the, the Monster Hunter games, just obviously on, a, on TV and it. Looks like it plays well, runs well, and I I don't know how it compares to Monster Hunter I World. I mean, but you can look already look impressions of this game. This game released a year ago in Japan. That too. So, <laughs> I mean, it seems like a pretty decent Monster Hunter game, and hey, you can finally play it in English for those Monster Hunter fans. The 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 thing is here is that this is a proper Monster Hunter game. Don't get me wrong, I love Monster Hunter World. I think Monster Hunter World is a fantastic game from beginning to end, but the thing that's missing from Monster Hunter World is a G rank, which is the highest rank in Monster Hunter, mm -hmm. which is absolutely there in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Um, so this feels, feels more proper hardcore Monster Hunter like it should be. Um, and it will be very interesting how this does in a post... Monster Hunter um, World World. Yeah, Monster, <laughs> yeah, Monster Hunter World World. I was trying to f figure out a different way to say World two times in a row, <laughs> but you already did it, so hey, I, you can blame me, me this time. Um, <laughs> it's interesting to see how it will do. I mean, I still say that the proper Monster Hunter fans will still definitely pick this up because this is more hardcore focused, especially with the highest rank still being in there. Um, and of course, your... 3DS part, um, process in generations can be put up in yeah. tra and put over to the Switch version. So there's not many major incentives to s basically skip it if you're already big into Monster Hunter. Um, it, I still think for newcomers it's also a very good solid introduction because it's generations has always has been a best of, of every single monster that has been in the game. Mm -hmm. So if you want a good overview of what monster, proper Monster Hunter is like, 
then Outside the World is likely going to be your second best introduction to the series. Awesome. Now, are you a Monster Hunter fan, uh, Petri? I played World. I played um, not a much of World, but fair amount with a friend of mine who is way into it. He played way more hours. And <laughs> I always think that you need, with most of these Monster Hunter games, you need, some, you need some guidance. You need someone who says, like, okay, this is how this works, and this is how this works. Even in World, which they, sm- they transferred out and smooth a lot of these awkward things that you need to do and how, how everything works, because in previous Monster Hunter games, like, well, here's the game, and just go ahead and figure out most of these detailed systems and in world they introduced a lot of stuff but still had some things like oh that's how that works and that oh okay okay some some guidance was still needed and i think that if you've played a lot of world you actually liked it like like how the systems all work together ultimate will be a very very still very a very much monster hunter but also a lot of traditional stuff is still in there that have been smoothed out with world so it may still be a little bit of culture shock but if you're truly into it go ahead and pick it up it has more monsters than world and it looks great for a 3ds game ported to the switch Mm -hmm. and it runs fairly well so yeah, if you if you like if you like World, if you if that was the, your first game into the series, you will enjoy this. But beware that it's harder and it's maybe more of a culture shock because of the old systems are more in place than with World. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, as somebody who played every Monster Hunter game back to back, I would say that while World is a very good introduction to its base mechanics. I still feel the Generations does a lot of good comparison to the more tradi- other traditional Monster Hunter games and saying from look, this is what you need to know at, at the basics and then builds from that. So once again, I will main t- and stay that Generations is your second best introduction to the Monster Hunter because it still explains more than in other Monster Hunter games. Um, so, regardless if you played World or not, I still think you can have a really good time with this one. Oh it's yeah, a, definitely. It's a mm. it's a solid time sink, too. If you just want have want to have something to grind for. And for now, it's the only option on Switch. And if you think like, oh, you don't have a PS4, I just skipped World. It's like, hey, go for it, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I think that's why a lot of Monster Hunter fans wanted it because they wanted it portable, like it is on the 3DS, but a bigger screen with better graphics. So this sort of fits that. Uh, desire for them, and I, I've seen a lot of Monster Hunter fans be really excited about the fact that this is finally getting a uh, finally English yeah. release. A little too late, but hey, still there. Yep, still exactly. There. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the only game we have left to talk about is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and I got to try out. Let's see, I tried out Ganondorf finally and Solid Snake, and. And Snake f- feels pretty much the same, but I did get his final smash off, which is a little different how you lock one to opponents now and it sort of fight the missiles seek uh, seek after them. And it's amazing how different Ganondorf feels now that his smash has been changed up to all utilize his sword. It's He's really fun. Yeah, he goes more back to how he was in, in Melee, which I think was very long overdue because in Brawl and Smash 4... Or Smash, yeah, Smash Four, basically is a better name for it. I wanted, always wanted to say Wii U and 3DS, but like, <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? The fans are right. I should say Smash Four. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, there, he felt more like a clone of different characters, or a more combined elements of different characters thrown together. Now it feels more, he feels more like its own character and proper, like badass. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I really did enjoy uh, using him. And uh, I'm not the best with Snake, but somehow won both of my, both of my matches, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what uh, would what, you get to see with uh, Smash Ultimate Patriot? Well, I played the game for about an hour and a half. So oh, wow. I got to try everyone. Wow. And yeah, so I got to try basically everyone and didn't see all the Ultimate Smashes or, you know, see all the animations or anything like that, but I did try everyone and see everyone and yeah i am a big smash fan uh i really enjoyed smash 4 didn't like brawl as much and of course melee is great was also highly technical 
and so I, I thought they did a really good job with how they balance Smash 4 but now playing this you really do feel like it's a brand new game it's like this plays so right. much quicker mm -hmm. and the animations are so much quicker and like they said in the direct they want to get to the point you know to the action like bam 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 back to back to back so that re you really feel that you really do feel that with all the characters even with slower characters you feel that they play quicker it's more to the point um, stuff like little things like you fly off the screen and a little screen comes up with a red dot and then you see yourself like oh that's where I, that's where i am especially in games where you have multiple people playing like six seven people or even eight people playing it's like where am i again you truly it feels way more uh, way more focused on the fact that you still want to see yourself and still want to play so yeah i was really happy with it how did you enjoy your uh, hour and a half or hour of gameplay uh don after E3, I had an, like eight characters left to try. Mm -hmm. um, I tried those final eight. Now I've played every single character that was in the demo, like proper two matches each. So I've played everything now. <laughs> Thank you. For, I don't need to play the game anymore. I, I, oh, I, I guess since, just kidding. I guess since you've both uh, since you've played all the characters, which one feels the most different from their original version? I would say Zelda actually. Oh okay. Yeah. Now that you mention it, yeah. Zelda is was really surprising to me, especially her side B and down B are very different now. Her down B in particular requires more tact mm -hmm. because Finesse, you need to yeah. hold it until you can use it um next to that her smash attacks overall feel super fast like way faster than twilight princess zelda yeah i really enjo enjoyed playing zelda it really felt different they had to get used to it again it's like oh well this is all different it's like oh this is all strange to me yeah it really felt a lot different but a lot better than uh, than it was and also her, her style her look or the choice that they did for making her uh, zelda from uh, link between worlds is really aesthetically really really good choice mm. really felt that you know it fits way more into the world you know so, uh, twilight princess you know people hate it people love it but it has a as a art style that stands out in to the backgrounds and to the to the other uh, characters and this this fits way more in the smash universe i think right yeah uh, another character that I felt was, was the, well, more because I played him a lot in Smash 4, which is Pit. Um, I felt that his side B was far quicker. Mm -hmm. um, because you basically did a side smash and you basically throw an enemy up into the air now. Um, which feels a lot more effective, especially if they're in high percentage and want to do a combo. Yeah, that's awesome. So basically you do a side B, they're up in the air, you you make a you charge up your smash attack, do it, and you do the, do the KO. Um, that's how I will likely place <laughs> Smash <laughs> Ultimate now. Nice. Um, other than that, um, I played two more additional matches with the Inkling. I played like six or seven during E3 because I love the Inkling so much. Oh, it's so much fun. Um, yeah. Um, Inkling is likely has a good chance to be my main in Smash Ultimate, next to Pet. Um, I think that Inkling and all of, his, all of her moves are freaking fantastic. Um, especially the basic B, with basically throwing ink on your opponent, then doing a few quick smashes and throwing them right into up through the air. Freaking awesome. Um, I think using the roller to, to stomp them into the ground is also a very good, uh, very good strategy, very sound. Um, yeah, I, I like a lot of the moves and like the rec the up air recovery with the the super jump is just really really handy. Yeah, played played really well. I love the effects on on the character. I love the fact that the paint stays on the on the stage and if you shoot someone with the paint, it stays on them for a while. And I think that aesthetically also it just fits. You know, the way they implemented it, it just fits like she's been she or he's been playable for like ten years already. Mm -hmm. So. I did a really, really well, really good job with it. Yeah. One other character that I think I, I put a lot of time in with Smash 4, I, I don't necessarily see that as a main, but I still really enjoyed using him, is, is Marth. Um, his side B is also... There are a lot of improvements with side Bs this time around. <laughs> um, yeah, his, overall. His side B, his, um, his slicing move with the Falcon is is also pretty quick now. 
um, mm. and I really, really like it. It does a lot more damage now, too, oh, that's in comparison good. to Smash 4. So it's it's more of a um, slicing move, which helps to increase like the chance of a KO way quicker. Yeah, you don't have to grind on, on a character as much as you did before. Anything stand out for playing it again with you, Derek? I mean, it just it just felt polished. It really does. Like it feels like a, a good starting point already. Uh, characters are a lot of fun. I'm I'm still you know still notice the fact that it is definitely faster than Smash Four, and uh, the knockback seems a little bit faster. Maybe not as far, but you just go so much faster to those places. Uh, that it feels like you're like being launched a lot quicker and being a lot uh, and farther almost. Um, but it, it, once you adjust to it, it really is just a ton of fun. And I can't wait to check out more of the characters. Honestly, I, I, I think they we really are looking at one of the best versions of Smash Brothers, and I, I really can't wait to play more of it. Not because of just the characters, but because of pure of how the strategy is handled mm. and how the mechanics are handled. Exactly. I think that overall they put real time and effort into thinking from okay what worked about smash 4 and what should we bring back from say brawl or Me melee um they looked at their options they brought um side dodging back they do more stuff with perfect shield um but it really comes down to the characters i think that the individual changes made to every single character are so incredibly important mm -hmm. and then adding like ridley and inkling on top of that is just crucial to keeping the game fresh and getting new options in there. But even seeing characters return like like Snake um, makes new matchups like immediately possible. So I am what I'm mostly looking forward to when the game launches in December is just trying every single character a bit more <laughs> and seeing what seeing what sticks and bites with me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that will take quite a while trying all almost 60, oh, yes. uh, 60 characters. Yeah, the, seeing how everything's truly really changed and what you like about the changes or don't like about the changes. And I really felt like playing Ridley for the first time I was like, okay, this is interesting. I need way more time before <laughs> I say like, okay, this is overpowered. This is this this looks like too insane. It's like I think there's way more finesse towards the character than people realize. But I do think that an, an imposing character on the battlefield immediately is like, okay, this is something, if you choose that, you need to handle it properly, you know? Mm -hmm. That's like, yeah, so someone chooses that, they know exactly what they're doing, or they just chose it because, well, it looks cool. So. <laughs> oh man, I had such a good moment with, with Ridley yesterday during uh, my time with him. Um, where I was on Suzaku Kasu with a friend and I dragged um, his character around with side B and somehow I instantly KO'd him. <laughs> yeah, with that, uh, I'm, so I'm guessing good. off the right side because that would be a, the best place to send them. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, then I think that covers it for our post E3 event discussion. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And I want to thank both Don and Petreat for uh, joining me to talk more about these games. So of course, be sure to uh, subscribe to Game Explain for more on Nintendo and other things gaming as well. Until next time, bye.